Hi everyone and welcome to a quick inbox review of this the Saab JAS39C Gripen in 172nd scale from Rebel um, so here's the box art I'm not that fussed about box art but it shows you uh, both schemes this one the uh, Czech one and here a Swedish version um, it does tell you it's 172nd scale it's a little over 20 centimeters by a little over 12 and a half size that's the box um, the side of the box tells you it's a skill level 3 and once again shows you that it comes in Swedish and check markings the back of the box as usual is just the same advert that you get for um, other Revel kits that you usually get on a Revel box it is a side opening kit but I don't really worry about that let's have a look inside okay in the box you get four light grey sprues one clear sprue and one set of transfers as well of course the instructions so let's have a look individually at the sprues the first and largest sprue contains some fuselized parts um, the vertical stabilizer tops of the wings um, air intakes the other side of this is um, I believe the wheel bays that will fit in here if we look we can see there are panel lines and they are very very fine um, I'll be painting this with an airbrush but with a if I did a ham fisted job with a hand brush and laid it on too thick I might actually lose some of those lines you get two choices for engine exhausts with the petals open or the petals closed and looking around there does appear to be some flash. This is not the 1989 kit. This is a 2014 new tool. So something so new, it's a bit disappointing to see so much flash. Um, but there is some nice detail. I believe you've got um, the rear half of the fuselage and a pod from underneath. On the other sprues, we have the front half of the fuselage. Once again with some finely recessed detail. Here's the cockpit tub with some details on there. Um, and if we flip that over, I believe we have the wheel well. This is the gear door cover, which for wheels down like I will do in an unusual rebel style, you will have to separate yourself. That's not too much of a problem. Um, I've looked on the instructions and I believe this ejector pin mark will be visible. I don't think these will be, but that one will. So it's annoyingly placed, it'll have to be filled, and it's difficult to sand that. Well, it's not straightforward anyway. That's that. The other two sprues are duplicates of each other. Let's have a look in detail. So this is the ordnance sprue and wheel. And once again, there on the hard points is some recess detail over the wheels they have detail but they don't look particularly crisp or or well defined so there is once again nice detail on there okay the clear parts various clear parts for lenses and landing lights and things like that the things we're mostly interested in here is the front half of the canopy reasonably clear and quite nice the rear half of the canopy is the same, but you can probably see here, there's a horrible little ridge. Now, that won't be too hard to get rid of, uh, uh, like sanding, go, going down to about, I don't know, I think you get to about 20,000 grit on one of my polishers, and maybe some polishing compound, and some, then clear it, and that should come out. But really, do, should I have to do that? Maybe not. Although they're quite clear, that is a disappointment. Okay, the transfers. Let's have a look. So, we have the Czech national markings and the Swedish national markings. Um, just your normal registration letters. Here is the, um, the transfer for the instrument panel. Um, all the panels seem to be turned off. They're all black. Um, this is a little, uh, it looks like bullet, bullet, uh, bullet holes. I think it's it's painted on the actual um, 
on the actual scheme itself. I don't know whether this represents something or, or some historical event. Uh, these are the ones I'm interested in. Uh, it's a Tiger Meat version from the, from the Czech Air Force. Um, and these look quite nice. So these are the ones I'm going to be using. I'll be doing the Czech version. Plenty of stenciling, which I love. Um, they appear to be not too glossy and quite thin. All appear to be in register. Although there does appear to be quite a bit of carry film on some of them. But hopefully, Microsoft will um, sort out some of that. Okay, a quick look at the instruction sheet. You get your usual Revel Fair, Revel Sar Gripen, uh, a picture of the finished model, history of the aircraft. Not necessarily the aircraft, is it? But this is history of the of the model in German and in English. We flip over and get the usual before read before you start safety measures and things like that. It tells you how to build a kit um, and what all the symbols mean. That's normal fare, isn't it, for most kits? Then you get your colour call out. This being a Revel kit, of course, there's some mixing required, but not as much in this kit as you get in most kits. From Revel, there's only two colours that require you to do any mixing. Then we're straight onto the instructions. A uh, useful sprue map, just in case you want that. And then, as usual, no surprise, it starts step one with construction of the seat and then onto the cockpit tub. It's not very clear, actually. I, I don't like these style of instructions. I prefer the new instructions. Um, they all seem to be a bit more hand-drawn than the new ones. It does seem to have a very strange method of construction for a modern aircraft, or any aircraft really. We build the first front half of the cockpit. And fuselage. And then start building the rear. Installation of the uh, exhaust. Once again, petals open or petals closed. Installation of the geared bays and then this is the, the thing I'm talking about, the strange construction. You see uh, you have a, a front half and a rear half and the bottom is attached to the wings. Strangely stretched out like that, it looks like some sort of uh, voodoo. An F-101. Um, flaps and ailerons or they're probably flapperons on a modern aircraft um, and they're added onto the wings. And finished. Step 15, you start attaching air brakes and all the little bits, and then we're on to gear assemblies, which don't look too complex. And then, of course, the option for if you're having the wheels up. More gear assemblies, this is the front gear, and then the whole thing I mentioned about having to cut the gear door if you're having it, having it open. Oh, there's if you haven't closed. Here the option with fuel probe up or fuel probe retracted. Just the nose cone on. Little parts. Tiny little parts that you might miss. Otherwise, telling you where to drill the holes for, I believe, the ordnance later on. Adding more parts for this time to the front and then adding the, the clear parts. Can be closed or open. And then the rest concerns itself with ordnance. I'm not going into too much detail with that. It appears, however, there are many different options for ordnance. And then you've got your two schemes. You've got a Czech Air Force Target Meet 2014 and Swedish Air Force Red Flag 2013. I'm not going to concentrate on these or the part with them um, with the transfers for the ordnance because you also get in the pack an instruction sheet replacement which is exactly the same thing 2014 Tiger Meat 2013 Red Flag and ordnance I have noticed that the transfer numbers on here are different they obviously made a mistake with the transfers so there you go mostly stenciling and their letter call outs for the colours Mm, 
nothing fancy there. And then uh, the same, almost the same colour, but just two tone, the two tone grey, but without the fancy Tiger Mint colours. Uh, Swedish version, and information for transfers on pylons and the other. So that's the inspection sheet. Okay, so there you have it, uh, a review of the 172nd scale Saab JAS 39C Gripen from Rebel. Um, good points about the kit, it's not going to break the bank. I think uh, off the shelf it probably cost you about £16, maybe £17, something like that. Online you probably get it cheaper. I got it cheaper uh, because I got a 20% discount from the particular shop. Um, that's chapter one in Leak in the Staffordshire Moorlands here in the UK. I'll give them a quick mention because I do get a discount there for being a loyal customer. Um, so it's not going to break the bank. That means it's not particularly a high-end kit. Um, the detail on it is great. It could have more, but for, for the price, I'm not going to complain about the level of detail. That's that's fine. Um, so that looks quite quite nice. The, um, the transfers... I like the Tiger Meat scheme. That looks interesting, I suppose. Um, downsides, this isn't the old um, 1989 tooling uh, from who, who tooled by a Rebel originally. Uh, reboxed by Itleri, Tamiya, Airfix, and I think Bilek, or Bilek, if that's how it's pronounced. I think they um, reboxed it, but this is the new 2014 tooling. And so I'm surprised to see so much flash on it. Flash isn't too much of a problem, really, except on some small parts, and it is on this. It's on the small parts that can sometimes be a bit fiddly to get rid of. Uh, the only other downside, I suppose, is the seam line we saw on the canopy. Once again, we can get rid of that, but I shouldn't really have to. So it's got upsides, it's got downsides, um, it, but it wasn't really expensive, so I'm not going to complain too much. We'll see how it goes together when I build it. I'm planning on building it in the next few months. And so if you know me at all, that means, of course, in the next few years. So there you have it. There's a review of the JAS 39C Gripen. Um, this last bit is for Alex of Alex's Model Kits. Until next time, thanks for watching. Keep modeling and have fun. Bye.